Yo, what's good, YouTube? Zamcrow here, aka Scoop, back with the uh, Ninamoy Nation Draft League. We have season four, week number one, the season opener for us, the Blackmont Rikers, and we're taking on the Evansville Dew Waters. So, facing off against AAA Battery, Adam, um, one, one of the guys that I just can't ever seem to beat. <clears throat> um,. He just seems to always get the 50-50s right um, when it comes to he and I playing. Um, and I don't know if team advantage plays into that. But for this matchup in particular, it's a pretty even matchup. Um, both of us have really solid offense versus each other, as well as really, really solid defensive pivots and team synergy. Uh, defensively versus um, each other so gonna be tough tough to break his squad but at the same time I'm gonna have a tough squad to break too um, he's got the Aegis Slash which was banned from having Z moves so my opponent opted for uh, three Z move users of a little bit uh, lower caliber um, he's got the Tapu Bulu, Infernape, Mega Aerodactyl, Greninja, Como O, Claydol, Lantern, Ursa Ring, Scolipede and the Pidgeot, where he's decided to make Infernape, Greninja, and the Pidgeot his Z-move users. And we have Mega Metagross, Hydreigon, Clefable, Suicune, Landers Incarnate, Licky Licky, uh, Decidueye, Oricorio, and Mudsdale. So, if you didn't catch in the uh, draft analysis, this Landers Incarnate is sheer force, and Mega Metagross has no restrictions, which is pretty cool. I'm going to be a fun match here. So, our Zoom of users being Landers Incarnate and Oricorio, we've decided to bring Mega Metagross, Hydreigon, Clefable, Suicune, Landorus, and Licky Licky um, to this matchup. So, the reason for that is that um, Clefable, Suicune, and Licky Licky make for defensive annoyances to my opponent. And. Mega Metagross and Landers have really, really solid offensive capabilities in this matchup, as well as Hydreigon. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the reason for the squad. Um, more specifically, Mega Metagross is a Meteor Mash variant with Earthquake for the Aegislash, as well as packing Bullet Punch so that I can outpace things like uh, Mega Aerodactyl or a Picked Off. Or, or not a picked off, but a weakened Scolipede to pick it off with a bullet punch. And then our last move is Rock Polish. So I decided between Zen Headbutt and Rock Polish, I felt like I didn't need Zen Headbutt that much. And uh, Rock Polish could actually come in handy um, to the point to where I could be able to outpace something like Greninja. And, or excuse me, uh, the Aerodactyl and Scolipede in the late game. Or potentially even the Infernape, uh, like a Choice Scarf Infernape. So, yeah, Mega Metagross really nice in this matchup. I EV'd it to be able to two-hit KO a max HP Mega Aerodactyl with Bullet Punch. Um, I think with or without Stealth Rocks. Uh, definitely with Stealth Rocks. I'm, I'm not sure without um, off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, we were able to outpace the Infernape, which is his fastest Pokemon, outside of the Mega Aerodactyl and his Greninja. And, I guess, uh, Scolipede as well. But, Scolipede, I, well, I guess Scolipede threatens me with the same Earthquake damage that uh, Aerodactyl does, so. Next up, we have Hydreigon, which can switch into Tapu Bulu, um, Hydreigon pretty comfortably. It switches into Greninja, um, Claydol. Lantern, things like that. We are packing the Tangaberry so that the threat that is Scolipede does not force us out immediately and we can potentially avoid setup options. If uh, like if setup means that we lose, then the play would be to stay in uh, with Hydreigon and just attack since we do have our Tangaberry. So our moveset is the Dark Pulse, Dragon, or excuse me, not Dragon Pulse, but Draco Meteor. Flamethrower and Roost. Roost for longevity, Flamethrower for the Tapu Bulu. It also hits the Aegislash, so I don't have to play too many mind games in the late game. And then Dark Pulse hits the Aegislash. Uh, super, super, super hard. Uh, knocks out the Claydol as well, or at least a 2-hit KO. And then Draco hits 
um, come over pretty hard. Drops the Greninja, drops the Infernape. Um, um, if they're bulk, bulkless, bulkless, yeah, <laughs> that's a word. So uh, yeah, this Hydreon is actually it's speedy. It outpaces the Come On, but it has no offensive investment. It's actually very very bulky. Max HP with 108 defense EVs, and can take Wood Hammers after Stealth Rocks from a banded adamant tapu bulu it avoids a two hit ko from mega aerodactyl for, uh, with stone edge unless stealth rocks are up which is pretty nice a uh, really solid set overall and can be annoying to my opponent i really wanted to run taunt or toxic or defog as well but just could not have uh, afforded the move set or the move slot i should say so next up we have Clefable, which is an unaware variant so that Kamuro can't get out of hand. We have Moonblast, Stealth Rock, Wish, and Protect. For longevity, we avoid two hit KOs from Flash Cannon from a max special attack Kamuro or a Poison Jab from a max attack Kamuro. We avoid two hit KOs from <laughs> um, max special attack Fire Blast from Infernape and max attack Flare Blitz from Infernape as well. So yeah, Clefable really, really putting in the work there. Also able to avoid uh, two hit KOs, uh, potentially even three hit KOs from Torrent Greninja's Surf, as long as uh, as long as they are not Torrent boosted. Next up, we have Suicune, which helps with with the Infernape, helps helps with Greninja, helps with Scolipede, uh, all to an extent. We do have Scald and Toxic, which is really nice with Protect as our last move. Well, not our last move, but. Um, a move to help toxic damage rack up, help get rid of terrain, or burn turns of the terrain, and uh, let toxic damage rack up and things like that. I am packing Roar for the Como O, for the Aerodactyl, the Infernape. I just don't want those things to be able to set up in front of me. Scolipede, same thing for that, just Roar it out. Um, it does not appreciate coming in with Stealth Rocks repetitively, which is nice for me. So getting Stealth Rocks up is really, really important for me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, having, having that Uncle Fable, which is a reliable Pokemon to get them up, is really solid. And then Suicune to roar things around. Super, super solid. Able to weaken things. Put them in, thing, put them in range of things like uh, Landers and Corner, which is the uh, fifth Pokemon in the lineup this week. And we have a Rock Polish Gravity variant. So, uh, with Gravity, we're able to hit Aerodactyl and the Claydol with, and the Pidgeot with super effective. Well, not necessarily super effective. Except for the Aerodactyl, it's super effective. But the other two would just be neutral damage. But uh, yeah, Earth Power nonetheless going to be able to do massive amounts of damage to my, my, my opponent's squad. Um, Tapu Bulu, his only ground resistance, um, gets blown away by Sludge Wave. And I am a Life Orb modest variant able to outpace the Kamo with that uh, with that modest nature. So it's really nice. Um, don't have much bulk investment, I believe. On Landorus. Uh, th this is one mod that I went more offensive, whereas uh, Mega Metagross and Hydreigon are very, very bulky um, with offensive capabilities. Landorus is just, just a glass cannon here, but it does hit like a truck. Last but not least, we have Licky Licky, which is another Wish Protect variant, such as, uh, or like the Clefable is. Well, the two make a very blobby core, very, very nasty to break for my opponent. And I do have Knockoff and Toxic on this set. So I can toxic things like Bulu or Infernape or Como upon switching. Get rid of the items upon switching, such as uh, leftovers on things like Bulu or Aegislash or Scolipede's Black Sludge or potentially on Life Orb or something like that. So uh, yeah, it's going to be the squad, and we can go ahead and hop into the replay now and see what goes on here. All right, so here we are with the replay, and my opponent Triple A decides to bring the Aegislash. Or excuse me, Aegislash, Tapu Bulu, Mega Aerodactyl, Lantern, Greninja, and Scolipede. So no Infernape, really nice for me. Uh, no Como, -O, really nice for me as well. But still a very, very, very threatening squad um, overall. So I, I noticed at Team Preview his only potential Stealth Rocker was the Aerodactyl. And his uh, other two potential Hazard leads would be the Greninja and Scolipede. So I felt like uh, Suicune would be an okay lead for me. Um, despite my opponent potentially leading off with something like Lantern with the Tapu Bulu in which I could just switch around. So let's see what he wants to lead off with. He does decide to lead off with the Tapu Bulu, which puts me at a disadvantage early on. So I'm just going to click Protect here. I don't expect him to be a substitute variant because then he lacks uh, the ability to uh, 
really break my squad. Um, I felt like it would be a choice band variant to break things like Clefable and Licky Licky, um, Ori Corio, Suicune, even Landris and things like that. So he does go for the wood hammer and that damage does reveal to be choice band. So I am going to be able to roost up here as I go into my Hydreigon and uh, he's probably going to be forced out here. And he does go out into his lantern as I am able to get back nearly to full. And here I'm going to click Dark Pulse. I really wish I had Taunt. And I thought about um, swapping out here into my Mega Metagross and then doubling out into my um, Landris on a potential Volt Switch. But ultimately decided that if he didn't have Toxic, then Dark Pulse was my best play. So I go for the Dark Pulse. He does Toxic me. And now I'm on a timer. So I'm going to hard switch out into my Landris expecting him to Volt Switch out. But he actually goes for the Scald and blows me away. And I've got my Landers in here. I'm still behind, so I don't want to make any kind of wall predictions that yet. I just go for the Earth Power as my opponent switches out into the Mega Aerodactyl. And uh, after Mega Evolution, he will outpace me. Oh, he outpaces me regardless, I believe. So I'm just going to switch out to my Suicune, and my opponent gets a crit. So now this is huge, as I am left at 52%. So without that crit... I'm more so around the range of 70%, and you'll see why that matters here in a minute. So, my opponent switches out to Tapu Bulu as I go for the Toxic, and I'm going to get a little bit of uh, Leftovers and Grassy Terrain uh, health back. And then I'm going to click Protect, and I'm going to get Leftovers and Grassy Terrain once again here. Which is really, really nice for me, leaving me at 77%. So I went from 52 to 77%. Um, gaining roughly 25% of health back. So had I been at about 70% uh, percent and gained 25% health back, I would be back to full after one more protect, um, assuming that uh, I don't have to hard switch it into anything, uh, and knowing that I'm switching out here. So I would have been at 95% here, which would have been fantastic for me. So unfortunately, he did get that Stone Edge crit, but uh, I... I don't think it's going to change the game or anything like that. So he makes a double out into Lantern, expecting my switch out. And uh, I do go into my Metagross. I'm not sure if he was just predicting that. But as he goes for Scald, not wanting to be burned, I go into my Hydreigon. And I'm just going to roost up here. As my opponent reveals the Heal Bell, uh, which is really, really unfortunate for me. As I needed this Lantern and the Bulu on a uh, timer so i'm gonna go into my licky licky here and immediately force him to use more heal bells as he goes for the toxic of his own i toxic him and he doesn't know if i have heal bell which i don't in this particular scenario and i am just gonna click knock off here as my opponent goes into the tapu bulu and i get rid of his choice band so now i can switch into this thing way way more comfortably i'm gonna go into my metagross here i revealed hydreigon earlier a couple times actually so i go into my metagross this time expecting potentially a superpower and i can just throw off a meteor mash unfortunately i miss but uh, he does go into the edge slash meaning that that meteor mash would have done close he would have been back to full after grassy terrain and leftovers recovery however it does give him a free flash cannon as i hard switch into my hydreigon here and roost up forcing him out he goes into his greninja as i hard switch into my clefable now that now that he gets a spike up i'm going to go ahead and get a rock up or get my rocks up i should say but he hard switches into the bulu and predicting me to switch out into my hydreigon or to switch out into the metagross once again yeah definitely the metagross as he goes into his Aegislash, slash he pulls a double and uh, now i have the advantage though because i did go hydreigon this time and uh, put myself in an okay position to start getting some chip on some things. He goes into the Greninja. I get some decent chip here. And as my opponent goes for the Hydro Pump, I drop the Draco here. And I'm able to knock my opponent out. Picking up the first knockout of the game on turn 24 there. Really, really nice. He brings in the Scolipede. And uh, I can't let this thing set up. So I'm going to go into my Suicune here as my opponent misses. So um, he reveals to be Life Orb meaning that he would have did close to 45 percent there so i had i've been at 95 percent like i should have been and after a spike i would have been close to 85 percent or so um he would have left me at 40 percent and then after a protect and some grassy terrain i would have been out of range of the following uh mega horn so here had he landed um that stone edge from earlier would have been really really crucial so since he did miss, that Stone Edge crit becomes completely irrelevant, and I get back to a reasonable amount of health anyway. 
So uh, yeah, now he switches out, predicting my Scald, but I actually go for the Roar, bringing his Scullipede back in, and this time I'm actually going to stay in and click Scald, as he predicts me to Roar him out and goes for the Mega Horn. And I'm actually able to get him back-to-back uh, -back turns there, and actually able to pick up two knockouts within a five-turn pace, or a five-turn uh, period there. So he brings in his Lantern, and I'm playing a little bit aggressive here, and I'm going to keep it up as uh, I don't expect him to click Volt Switch, and I go straight for the Roar, forcing in his Mega Aerodactyl, forcing him to land a Stone Edge as I go for Scald here. And now I bring in my Meta Mega Metagross. I'm going to predict the Aegislash to come in, and I'm going to go immediately for the Earthquake, and it reveals to be uh, a three-hit KO. So I'm not going to be able to pick him off here. As he does go for the Shadow Ball, I do switch into my Licky Licky, and I am able to avoid any damage thanks to being a normal type. And now what I can do is just go for the Wish as my opponent clicks King Shield. Pretty obvious play there. Um, now I have a free knockoff. And uh, I do believe I do just that. It's too risky to do anything else. Um, however, he goes into his Bulu, which has already lost its item and is a Fairy type. So the damage was uh, basically nothing. And here I'm going to stay in to get a Toxic off versus the Bulu. This is the only thing standing in the way of uh, Mega Metagross being able to clean up. And what I mean by that is the grassy terrain um, is preventing the Aegislash from being two hit KO'd um, from the range it's at right now. So what I want to do is uh, get rid of Bulu so that the grassy terrain is no longer available for the Aegislash to wall my Mega Metagross because at this point he's in range of a two hit KO. So down goes Licky Licky. I'm going to roost up here, and I'm going to receive the wish on the same turn, bringing me back to full. But of course, toxic damage racks up, does 6% there. And I'm going to go for Flamethrower here, finally revealing my last move as he goes for the superpower. And since his choice band is removed, I was able to survive. And I'm going to be able to roost up here, and it's going to do even less damage thanks to the attack drop that superpower provides. And he's going to drop to the toxic. And uh, we're going to be able to take a comfortable lead here. And we're going to stay in with our Hydreigon. No reason to preserve this thing at this point. Go into our Mega Metagross and just click the Bullet Punch. Being able to pick off the Mega Aerodactyl. And now it comes down to the Aegislash. Can I knock him out here? Um, the answer to that is no, unless he goes for Shadow Sneak. If he goes for Shadow Sneak here, then he will be in his Blade form and I'll be able to knock him out with the Earthquake. But uh, yeah, he just goes for the King Shield there. Fair play. Fair play. And I'm going to go for the Earthquake here. Not able to knock him out. Let's see if he packs the Shadow Ball. He, he did reveal it earlier. He's able to pick us off here with the Shadow Ball. And now we're going to be able to go into our Landers Incarnate. And we're just going to be able to go for the Earth Power here. Um, as he does go for the King Shield, we are out of range of um, Earth Power. Or excuse me, uh, Shadow Snake. Potentially even at plus two, which is really nice. And uh, he brings in his Lantern here, and as long as it's not shook it, we'll go down. And we do pick up, Landers picking up the last two knockouts, we do pick up a 2-0 victory over AAA in the uh, season opener. So a really fun game. Um, I definitely, definitely enjoyed uh, the squad, especially my Fairy Dragon Steel Core. So much fun, and this was a fantastic game. Facing off against Aegis Slash, the Tapu Bulu. Uh, Mega Aerodactyl, Greninja, really, really surprised Infernape didn't come. But yeah, really good game to Triple A. Um, moving on to 1-0. and o. Nice way to start the season after after grabbing the title last season. So let's see what we can do for the rest of the season moving forward. That's going to be it for this one, though. Let me know what you guys thought about the prep and the plays on both sides of the field. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.